100, one degree day like this, I think of the road crews. That's got to be like working in an oven, right? I'm sure they want to be in and out as soon as is safely possible. Which got our Marshall Zellinger wondering why a certain type of repaving project always seems to take so long. It's like that scene from Office Space, but worse, because it's real life. Traffic through the heart of Denver has had its bumps lately. The city is tearing up and repaving Spear through downtown. But this week, it's been the bridge between Lawrence and Larimer that has slowed traffic and got me wondering, why do bridges take longer to tear up and repave than the rest of the road? You want to mill off, you want to remove the old asphalt, and you want to put new asphalt on. But in between there, there's an extra step. That extra step is waterproofing, protecting the concrete from getting water damage beneath the pavement. Step one, take off the asphalt. Step two, make sure the concrete is sound. Step three, waterproof the concrete. And step four, repave. That process is about halfway done on the bridge right now, but the entire paving operation still has at least two more weeks. We're gonna try to um, reduce traffic impacts by uh, starting work a little bit later in the morning on that inbound traffic and try to miss some of that uh, rush hour traffic coming in. 25 to 30,000 drivers pass through here each direction each day. The 25 to 30,000 coming from I-25 into downtown will have all lanes of traffic open until 8.30 a.m. Then two will get shut down. The 25 to 30,000 coming north from Colfax into downtown, sorry, you lose two lanes at 7 a.m. Now would be a good time for the thing I was corrected on a few weeks ago, that the zipper merge is okay. Use that lane that's going away all the way to the end. If people honk at you, they're wrong. You're okay. Uh, got me thinking, learning about waterproofing concrete, Kyle, as I asked for information from CDOT on US 36 about if the road deck that was built five years ago, maybe it was lacking in that waterproofing, and that's how water got through into that fat clay that we learned about yesterday. Fat clay, not a problem in downtown Denver. Gotcha. But uh, uh, last last I knew, CDOT was not exactly in the question answer in business about what went on there at that spot at 36. Do we do we know if there's a problem with the road deck? We don't yet. No, no, no. Okay. We, we're still waiting to find out what, okay. what was built and, and sure. if it was appropriate. Patience. Patience, Marshall. Don't worry, we've got shows next week. Thanks, sir. Next time Alpine Demolition brings down a building in Denver, they will need adult supervision. City of Denver has reached a deal with the demolition crew we've been telling you about, the one that surprised the city with how it brought down a building near 10th and Bannock in April. Wasn't supposed to happen like that. Alpine is not going to lose its license, but if they tear down anything taller than three stories before the end of the year, they are going to need a babysitter on site, a structural engineer. Late Friday is when government agencies dump bad news. RTD took the occasion to announce good news, ensuring that most people are not going to hear it except you dedicated next viewers. RTD got approval from federal regulators to take the flaggers off the G-Line. That's cool. We've been waiting for that. Could start happening next week as soon as they get written permission certifying that those wireless crossing gates are safe. What does a Denver park goose taste like? Kind of like beef, according to my colleague who showed up today as Metro Caring dished out samples of recipes made with ground goose meat. The geese that were on the ground in Denver's parks before the city decided overpopulation meant that they needed to die. Hope that didn't ruin your appetite. Pardon, would anyone like a sample here? It's great being able to receive a free source of protein. Would you like a sample? Protein's the item that's in highest demand in our market. My name's Tommy Crosby. I'm our food access team lead at Metro Caring. We're located at 18th and Downing. This is Goose. So we're an anti-hunger organization looking to fulfill people's immediate needs for food with healthy, nutritious food. Would you like seconds? All free, no cost to everything that we do. We've been finding that just because our community is so diverse that some of our community members Members um, are really accustomed to cooking with goose. Basically, I'm cooking goose. We will take it downstairs into our market area, into the waiting area, hand out samples to our clients. Over the last two weeks, uh, we were communicating with Denver Parks and Rec and the USDA to receive some of that meat, and then on Monday uh, of this week, the meat was delivered. Um, we've been using it in a shepherd's pie, in a chili, um, in uh, two, South, two or three South African dishes, um, and the feedback has been really good. I thought that it was very similar to beef, maybe like a little bit more kind of uh, similar to lamb or goat, but very similar to ground beef, and it was really, really tasty. I guess I'll just get four of each, so if I could just get two of those. Yeah. We'll probably have goose meat 
through the end of the day today, maybe into early next week, but I wouldn't be surprised if it only lasted through the day today. That wouldn't surprise me either, in part because Metro Caring is a nonprofit that's open to the public. Unlike some food banks, no documentation or financial qualifications required. Anybody can walk in. In fact, their own staff and volunteers can get their groceries at that market at 18th and Downing. Our next question comes from a viewer named Cynthia. She asks, what is the exact time of the anniversary of the moon landing on Saturday in mountain time? Don't know the time zone of the moon. Great question, Cynthia. First off, the time on the moon. The Apollo 11 mission used UTC, Coordinated Universal Time. It's the time standard for the Greenwich Mean Time GMT time zone here on Earth. Neil Armstrong stepped onto the moon at 2.56 UTC. Remembering that we were in daylight saving time in Colorado, and we checked, we were in 1969, Armstrong made history at 8.56 p.m. and 15 seconds here in Colorado. So if you want to mark that exact moment of the moon landing 50 years later, it's Saturday, 15 seconds after 8.56 p.m. Colorado's number of vehicle deaths dropped last year. There were six straight years of increases before that. Yet the head of the Colorado State Patrol would not say that our roads are getting safer. I asked him about it this week. I'm guessing that most of the people watching this are going to be on a Colorado highway pretty soon. Who or what do you think is the greatest threat to their safety? Uh, themselves, frankly. It's uh, driving is probably the most dangerous thing the common person does every day. So how do you do it? You legislate it, you make some appeal to people emotionally. I mean, certainly both have been tried. What do you think? I think it's a human being issue. And I think uh, we can make all the laws that we want. We'll write as many tickets, but I don't want to write any of those. Um, it's a recognition that your life matters. Um, and it is the attention to driving that's going to keep your life. And that's, um, it's a personal thing. It's, it's not about tickets or arrests. It's, it's about your well-being and the people in your community's well-being. Every winter we have the same conversation with people about making sure that they have proper tires or chains to get up there. What's stopping CSP from putting somebody at every major on-ramp and physically checking every vehicle as they get on while they're being metered onto the highway? It's, it's not, I'm guessing that's not the best use of our resource. I don't think that's the best use of our resource right now. And even uh, we can encourage people to tell them what appropriate uh, equipment is. We can provide them resources. We work closely with CDOT to, uh, to provide the measuring tools and, and, and partnerships with private companies. Uh, but again, uh, that's, that's not the only problem. And then lastly, um, we've had a tough time getting an answer out of the governor about whether or not he might ever direct CSP to enforce Colorado's red flag gun control law. If it came to that, you got a bunch of conservative ser sheriffs that say that they won't do it. Is that something that you guys have the manpower to do, if so ordered? That's a conversation the governor and I have not had. That's not where, uh, but, but again, our, our primary focus is, is public safety on the highways right now. You can see my full conversation with Chief Packard on the next YouTube channel. There, we discuss CSP's five line of duty deaths since 2015, and I asked the chief if they need to be more willing to close highways and to inconvenience us as they investigate crashes so that they can better protect their troopers. Long story short, he wouldn't commit to that. Denver's wrapping realtors will be looking for a new parent company. Kentwood dropped Team Denver Homes though it's not exactly clear why. We looked at our empire, we were finally there. Team Denver Homes takes the throne in Denver. So I mean, yeah, it, it could have been the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air spinoff where they brag about real turning the real estate market upside rain. down in Denver. They were criticized for bragging about making money off of gentrification and the housing crisis. But then again, Kentwood also might have cut ties with them for their tone-deaf handling of the criticism when they told me that they didn't know why people were offended and mentioned that they have friends who are minorities. Or perhaps what really ended Team Denver Homes' number one selling status with Kentwood is that Little Man Ice Cream came out last night to say that they had lied their way onto Little Man's property in order to do the video shoot. It was shortly after that that Kentwood said they were done. Team Denver Homes and its marketing team did not respond to our questions about whether they really did have permission to shoot their marketing video inside Little Man Ice Cream. We first showed you the Denver video in our Presented Without Comment segment Wednesday. Appears some of you were speechless too. This was Aaliyah in Berlin. Kenwood Real Estate's Team Denver Homes video is today's edition of Presented Without Comment. Team Denver Homes takes the throne in Denver.
He watched history from the hood of his car. And I sort of little voice that said, if they can do it, why can't I? Apollo 11 almost got him into space as well. She gave them the knowledge. I was lucky enough that all three of my kids got to go through and know Mrs. Krantz. Her students gave her the love and what it meant to her family. Next. You've seen those those face app photos, you know, what people are supposed to look like when when they're older. Let me show you my favorite Wheat Ridge Police Chief Dan Brennan. There he is before and after. Now, this, this is not actually the face app. That's him in 1977 when he started his career with Lakewood Police and then now as he retires after 42 years in the business of serving our community. Chief Brennan, thank you. Enjoy what comes next. <laughs> Day so far of the year at 101 out of DIA. This ties our previous record that was actually set back in 2005 and today makes day nine in a row with 90 plus degree temperatures. This all comes to an end though as we head toward the weekend. Are you searching for that cool off? Don't worry, it's on the way. Still this evening, it's so warm out there. Bright blue skies across downtown Denver. Overnight lows will fall into the upper 60s tonight with mostly clear skies and we'll keep it extremely mild across the eastern plains. 40s and 50s going 
coming up in the mountains, but this cold front that's up to the north that swings right on it early tomorrow morning. That brings us the clouds, the cooler temperatures and some scattered thunderstorms firing up about two, three o'clock here in the metro area. So a dry start, but here they are rolling off the foothills onto the plains and you can kind of see some of them potentially turning severe. We will be watching out for some large hail, maybe some pretty strong winds out there. The bullseye for trouble right smack dab in Denver. So if you have any afternoon evening plans that are going to be outdoors, just a heads up. Tomorrow will be much cooler. We're back to the mid 80s, 80s across the northeastern plains, but still a hot one in southeastern Colorado and the high country is cooling off just a bit. We'll hit 80 on Sunday with another round of storms. Keep it in the 80s for the start of next week and then Kyle bounce back into the 90s by next week. Bring on the cool off. Exactly. And the two of us are dressed to go to the Kentucky Derby. Apparently. Let's go. All right. Thank you. Danielle. <laughs> Every school should have a Buffy Krantz, a sweet and loving kindergarten teacher who made everything fun. Willow Creek Elementary had the Buffy Krantz. She passed away recently, pancreatic cancer. Today, her students made sure the whole Krantz family knew how lucky they were to have had her. Our Byron Reed was there. We are lining the main road of our neighborhood with purple balloons. We are putting up a bunch of balloons for a neighborhood teacher who died. Mrs. Krantz had the adventure room in kindergarten, which is where kids went to do the truly special projects. So that was everybody's favorite thing to do. <laughs> that one. They all went through Willow Creek Elementary School, so they all had Mrs. Krantz. Uh, she was a great teacher as well as a great person. In kindergarten, she did a bunch of crafts with us. So like everybody knew knew her and she always gave us like candy and it was really fun. In April she was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and she just died this past week. And they are purple for pancreatic cancer awareness. So her family is going to drive down and it, it's just good to make them feel good about it. Miss Krantz gave these out in her classroom out of the spinning box. And every time you went out of her room you would get a piece that, of candy. That candy. <laughs> we will miss her sparkling blue eyes and smile. She kind of sums up Willow Creek community. It shows how much we support each other and how much we love the Krantz family and want to support them and honor what she did for all of us. Oh, it was everything. just so fun. It was so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. Her energy. She always made it super not school. This is about the kids wanting to, to say goodbye to Mrs. Krantz and to say thank you.
Apollo 11 was an inspiration, an invitation to a generation of Americans who could suddenly see themselves walking in those footsteps left on the moon, or at least getting somewhere in space. Our Mark Salinger met a man from Greeley who really did try to get there. You wouldn't think a lifelong quest to get to space yes. begins like this. It starts with some milkman in Kalamazoo, Michigan, who won three nights free Two, one, to go to Miami zero. Beach. 50 years ago this week, lift off. We have a lift off. Robert Stack held his breath with the rest of the world as the Apollo 11 blasted off. Knowing something's going to happen that has never happened in the history of this planet. He watched with his wife from the hood of their parked car with a front row view of the launch pad in Florida. At the time, he thought that milkman only gifted him a trip to view the launch. Space is where I want to go. As he watched the spacecraft disappear into the sky, the gift became much more. A sort of little voice that said, if they can do it, why can't I? Nearly two decades after the first steps were taken on the moon, How is the, quality of the, TV? the teacher and Air Force Colonel got closer to space than most ever will. I came close, and that was with Challenger. Out of the 80,000 teachers from across the nation who applied for a chance to ride the shuttle, Stack was one of 10 finalists. Would I still go in a space second? The retired colonel carries around a coin forged from the metal of the Apollo launch pad. It's a piece of that space history. A gift he'll one day give to his grandchildren. It was an incredible moment for the entire planet. In hopes we it's as powerful as the gift the milkman the gave to him. Up on Apollo 11. For next, I'm Mark Salinger. Robert Stack asked us for a favor. He wanted me to mention a group of people he thinks get forgotten in the Apollo story. All the people who sewed those spacesuits by hand, who packed the parachutes, who built the spacecraft, Robert makes, wants to make sure that they also get their due on the 50th anniversary. So, you know, I'm a podcast guy, so can I recommend the best Apollo 11 podcast I've heard? It's the BBC's 13 Minutes to the Moon. It's largely powered by the final 13 minutes of communications audio between the astronauts and Earth, and it's, it's interspersed with interviews from the people who were there. Hans Zimmer, the famous composer, wrote his first ever podcast score for 13 Minutes to the Moon. I'm Kevin Fong from the BBC World Service, this is 13 Minutes to the Moon. Oh, and then the music soars, and it's, oh, it's unbelievable. You can find a link to the BBC podcast on the next Facebook page. We have more of your good news and your feedback in harmony with this next.
Alyssa writes tonight, nice suit. You look like Bert from Mary Poppins. Don wonders if I have a barbershop quartet gig after this. And David says, your jacket looks like my pillowcase. Your pillowcase is tacky, man. See you next time.